Humans, as well as all of Earth's creatures, are designed for life here in the troposphere, where oxygen is about 21% of the air we breathe and average pressure at sea level is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Depending on where on the planet Earth we live, temperatures are generally hospitable. But as we ascend up through our troposphere, we find the percentage of oxygen, as well as the atmospheric pressure, decreasing. Above 15,000 feet, there is very little oxygen, so hypoxia would eventually cause us to lose consciousness. Beyond 62,500 feet, the very low atmospheric pressure, also referred to as hypobaria, would cause the liquid molecules inside our body to vaporize, swelling our soft tissues and resulting in certain death. As we climb further through the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere into space, we would find ourselves well above Earth's protective atmosphere, with the sun baking us at 248 degrees Fahrenheit on one side, while on the opposite side we would be freezing at minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. To survive, we'd need to take our troposphere with us, and the easiest way to do so is to don our own microclimate in the form of a pressure suit or spacesuit. But designing a pressure suit has its challenges, especially concerning mobility and functionality. And that's where the David Clark Company comes in. It all started right here in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1935, when Mr. Clark started work on anti-gravity suits for high-performance aircraft pilots. By 1941, Mr. Clark started working in earnest to find the pressurized suit solution. Mr. Clark designed the link net fabric that holds these pressurized environmental suits in place, as well as the machinery to make link net and all of the systems that allow for maximum mobility and integrity. Although some of his design principles are the same, materials and processes continue to evolve and improve. Let's see how a pressure suit is made. In the pattern design section, CAD operators design and generate patterns that are produced on large plotters. The patterns are labeled with all information required for production, are cut out, and then sent along to the mark and cut section. Here, the patterns are placed on a variety of specialized materials that comprise the multiple layers of the pressure suit, including the gas container, restraint, and exterior cover, among others. Once they are cut out and thoroughly inspected, it's on to the next station. In the stitching section, the pieces are carefully sewn together with exacting precision because lives will depend on their accuracy. The link net section is where the major components of the restraint layer are created. Link net is a unique material designed and developed by Mr. Clark that affords the wearer mobility when in a pressurized suit. David Clark also invented these specialized link net machines to create this unique material that provides for the structural integrity of the pressure suit while providing flexibility and mobility to the wearer. In the cementing department, seams are glued together to maintain the pressure in the suit. Helmets are also crafted here. With CAD, the helmet shell and components can be created and altered more quickly, but it is still the engineer with the expertise making critical decisions. In the assembly and test department, hardware that is machined right here gets assembled to the soft goods component. Lacing is installed and the fully integrated suit is sent for testing. Finally, the suits make their way to the test room each suit is put on or donned by experienced test personnel. In this final check, all suit functions are verified before the suit is deemed ready for the astronaut or aviator to whom it will be assigned. On June 3, 1965, American astronaut Ed White spent over 20 minutes outside the Gemini 4 spacecraft while James McDivitt photographed him through the hatch window. 
This was the first time that an American astronaut left the confines of his space vehicle and conducted an extravehicular activity, or EVA. The helmets, pressure suits, gloves, and ancillary equipment worn by astronaut White were designed, developed, and fabricated by David Clark Company. White enjoyed his spacewalk so thoroughly, he had to be told several times to return to his spacecraft. The flight director says, get back in. Okay. The tests astronauts White and McDivitt completed were preparation for mankind's greatest adventure, setting foot on the moon. And a little after three o'clock along the eastern seaboard, pilot White had opened up a new frontier for Americans to explore. In 21 and one half minutes, EVA was completed. The David Clark Company still makes components for all suits worn by American astronauts today. David Clark Company's team of experienced engineers and designers continues to develop the next generation of aerospace crew protective equipment that will take mankind further into the future. So, where will we go next? Mars? Planets that we have not yet discovered? Back to the moon? It will surely take imagination, research, and great inventors like David Clark to get us there. <laughs>